So to start with, uh, I thought I'd focus on the, the homeowner uh, because that's a category I'd, I'd imagine most people would uh, fall into. So even uh, potentially with fairly straightforward concepts, so there, there can be complexities. One being uh, main residence relief. Now, this can be easy in certain instances. Um, so um, it, 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 the idea is that if you've got a person, they own a home, they've just got one home, when they sell it, it's exempt from tax. But the, the situation can get more uh, uh, complicated, uh, in particular where there are limits uh, on uh, size of grounds, for instance. So main residence relief is limited uh, to um, grounds extending to half a hectare, which is 1.23 acres, I believe. Um, and if, uh, particularly in the countryside, we're lucky enough to have a property uh, with, with grounds that exceed that area, then the, the entirety, in theory, might not be exempt from capital gains tax. It's not a hard and fast rule, um, because there, there is a concept which is known as um, character. Um, if a garden is, um, because you've got a large property, you've naturally got a larger garden, uh, then in some instances you can have a uh, larger permitted area. Um, just for uh, context, that area is, I think, 70% the size of a football pitch. So it's not massive. Um, where we see this subject coming into play quite a bit is with development opportunities. So um, we, we've got quite a few um, clients around this part of the world uh, who, who might have had allotments or, or, or nurseries in days gone by and have actually got a um, fairly large area uh, attached to a property. Um, and uh, if they're lucky enough to be in the right kind of location, the, the opportunity for development might well be there. Um, so there's a key question. If you're selling off part of the, um, part of your grounds, uh, and retaining a property, does main residence relief extend, uh, to, to a part you're selling? If it fits within this definition of garden, then yes, it would. Um, but there might be some instances whereby if you've got a choice, um, some of the land might qualify, some might not. Um, so, um, that, that's one in particular it's, it's worth giving close consideration to. Um, there are also plenty of people who are lucky enough to have more than one home. Main residence relief only applies to one property at any one moment in time. Um, if you do acquire a second property, within two years of acquiring a second property, you can actually elect. Uh, so you can submit an election and confirm to HMRC which one is tax exempt. Um, you can then chop and change that election around as much as you like. But if you miss your two-year window, um, then you're, you're stuck. It's the one which you spend the most time in, the one which should stand out as, as being your tax exempt property. Now, there are a couple of other aspects in terms of if you're able to get a bit of income from your property. So um, renting it out, we've seen a bit more, um, say, uh, via Airbnb, if, if people are away, taking advantage of renting a property out uh, for a week or two here or there. Uh, particularly locally, perhaps when the Goodwood Festival is on, uh, you can really cash in. Um, they bought in a £1,000 miscellaneous uh, property allowance. Might be more relevant if you rent out your, your driveway, perhaps. But if you just get a small amount of income from property, um, then that allowance will, will ensure it's exempt. You don't have to pay tax on it. Uh, I'm guessing if you, you rent your property out with Goodwood on you, you'll probably get more than a thousand pounds in um, pretty much a week. So um, the other aspect to, to potentially look at um, is a rent room relief. Um, a, a condition for that though is you must be living in a property um, whilst it's being rented out. So the idea is you've got a tenant in the property, um, perhaps in one or two rooms. If you're sharing facilities, then you've got a relief there up to £7,500 during the course of a year. Um, and, and that's that's effectively per, per house. So if you've got a, um, a, a joint ownership situation, then then that would be shared. But again, it's quite useful for, for people um, if you have got um, tenants coming in, um, quite, quite a generous relief. Um, with the pandemic, we, we've seen a lot more 
uh, instances, of course, people having to work from home. So where, where does tax come in uh, uh, with, with working from home? So in the 2020 and 20, uh, to 21 and 2021 to 22 tax years, where the, the government uh, instructed everyone uh, to, to work at home where, wherever possible, um, they accepted that that would increase um, uh, costs, utility costs, whilst you're at home. Um, and, and for those that are employed, uh, everyone was entitled to claim an allowance of six pound per week throughout those two tax years, as long as they were required to work at home at some point in time. Um, so that works out at three hundred and twelve pounds. Um, some employers, like ourselves, decided to attach a pay us as an expense to our staff, which is fine. That was tax free. But if you didn't get that, if you haven't claimed it as an expense in any way. Um, then you can actually claim it back from the government by, by, by submitting uh, a, a, a claim if you don't do a tax return, go directly to HMRC. Um, since uh, April 22, um, that doesn't apply throughout the whole tax year. So again, you need to be back in the old position of being required to work from home if you're employed. Um, normally that would be a contractual requirement. Um, so your employer requires you to work at home rather than it being a matter of choice and convenience. Um, if you're self-employed, um, you've got a little bit more flexibility with this. You can actually measure uh, what the costs of your home working are, um, which could be useful if utility uh, costs haven't gone up recently. Um, so you can determine how much time you spend working at home, roughly what kind of area maybe your uh, office at home uh, comprises out of the entire property and do a reasonable apportionment um, and claim that as a, a source of expenditure.